Hello and welcome to KDP A to Z. It's that time of year where we all start thinking about our New Year's resolutions and topping the list for many people is a better income, a better work-life balance, a life where financial concerns really take a back seat. And this dream has become a real possibility. There is massive opportunity in the digital age that we're in to be able to produce a substantial, sometimes life-altering income from your computer. Now, I'm talking about self-publishing your own books on Amazon. There are, of course, lots of different ways that you can make an income digitally, but this is the one that I specialize in. I make a very healthy income myself using this method, and I want to show you just some of the books that have been independently published by normal people just like you that have changed that author's life. These authors are literally making thousands of pounds of passive income every single month just from the individual books which they've created. So the ones that I'm about to show you have all been independently published. You can have a little look on Amazon yourself and if you look down in the publisher notes, they'll always say that they're independently published. So this one's the Scissor Skills and this one's making currently $7,000 each month. We've got some vision board books here, again self-published. This one's making $29,000 each month. Got motivational coloring books, making $13,000 each month. This one here was published only 45 days ago, and this one's already doing $18,000 each month. Got a shadow work journal here. This one's creating $75,000. Another one here is the Unicorn, Mermaid and Princess activity book, making $1,500 each month. We have a puzzle book here making $5,000 each month. Now, once you've made the book, you can carry on making those monthly earnings every single month for the rest of your life. Imagine having just one of these books. Imagine having five of them. Imagine having 20. The possibilities with self-publishing is endless. And the best thing about it is that there's no upfront costs involved here. It costs you nothing to set up an account. It costs you nothing to upload your book. You've got a global market with Amazon and the ability to sell to anybody anywhere in the world. Without any postage costs, any physical stock, Amazon will take care of the printing and delivery for you and you'll get royalties for every single copy that you sell. Now, if you're thinking this is going to be a get rich quick scheme, it isn't. This opportunity requires some time, some effort, some education and practice. I'm going to be giving you all the education you need to get started. Consider this to be your crash course. Now I've made lots of different videos in the past, but this is going to summarize all the information in one place for you. I regularly make content about new niches that I found. So do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But let's get started by setting up an account with Amazon KDP. Now to begin with, and if you haven't done it already, this is the place where you need to set up your KDP accounts. So you go to kdp.amazon.com and it will take you to this page. You then click on join KDP. And here you need to put in your name, your email address and a password. Now, Amazon is quite strict about how many accounts that you're actually allowed to have. It is just one. So I'm not going to go and create a new account here. But basically, once you've done all this, it will request things like your mobile phone number so that it can verify that it's you. It'll also need to verify your email address. It's a very simple step by step process to creating your own account. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and sign in. Now, when you've signed in, it'll take you to this page here. Now, in order to be able to receive royalties, you're going to need to put some bank details in. You're also going to need to put some tax information in. That is a requirement that you have to do. So to do that, you just go along to your account. And here it's just asking me to verify who I am. The next thing that you have to do is put in your personal information. You're going to be an individual. You're not a corporation. You need your date of birth, your legal name. Please don't worry about pen names at the moment. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Your home address is required, as well as your postcode and your phone number. Then we're moving on to getting paid. Now, I already have got a bank account attached to my Amazon account, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to add another bank account. Now, you can choose whichever country you are in. I am in the United Kingdom. And here is where you put in the account holder name. So that is whatever name is on your bank account. Then here it's asking for the IBAN number. Now that's not your account number or sort code. IBAN stands for International Bank Account Number. 
And it's saying here it should contain between 15 and 31 characters and no spaces. It's also asking for your BIC code, which is your bank identifier code or SWIFT code, which should be eight or 11 characters. Now these are not readily available. If you go onto your online banking and click on your account, there should be an information button somewhere there. It will say something like send your bank details. Click on that button and it should show you these two numbers, your IBAN and your BIT code. The other thing you can do is you can search in the help section on online banking. These might also be printed on your paper statements. Once you've filled all those bits in, you just press add. Then you have to go on to tax information. So to do that, you just view provide tax information. I've already done mine, but let's have a little look at it. So it's just asking you to take this small interview. And in here, you're answering questions like, what is your tax classification? We are individuals, we're not a business. Obviously, if you're a citizen of the United States, you would need to click yes, otherwise it's no. Are you acting as an intermediary agent? No. Then here you're going to put in your full name, where you live, your complete address, and then it's asking for taxpayer identification number or TIN. Now this really only applies if you're living within the United States where they provide these tax identification numbers. If you're not able to provide a TIN, you have to select one of these sections. So the country where you're liable to pay tax does not issue TINs to its residents. So just select the one that applies to you and then you continue. Once you've filled all that, those bits and pieces in, then it will tell you your withholding rate. And that means the amount that Amazon will withhold from you. Hopefully yours will be 0%, meaning that Amazon will not take any of your money away from you to pay tax. But do bear in mind, if you do start earning a substantial income doing this, you would have to declare your own tax. Once you've done all that, you press save and you're ready to go. Feel free to have a play around and explore the entire dashboard if you want to. Before we get on to creating an actual book, the first thing you need to do is to select your niche. By that, I mean a topic that you are going to write about or create content for. Are you going for a kid's book? Are you writing fiction? Are you making a self-help guide? What is it that you are going to do? Do you want to create lots of low content books or do you want to have more substantial content in each book? Choosing a niche is tricky. So before you start, write down a list of all the things that you know, all the things that you're good at, or all the things you enjoy. So for me, that would be science, maths, knitting, trying to run a household, dealing with my daughter, gardening, avoiding social events, etc. Once you've done this, I would go along to ChatGPT. If you don't already have this, I strongly recommend it for so many things. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence platform, which I use regularly to help me brainstorm. It's completely free to sign up and it's a bit like having a conversation with somebody. The website address for this is openai.com. And if you've never been to it before, try ChatGPT. Now here, I've said to ChatGPT, I'm good at math, science, gardening, knitting, avoiding social events, dealing with a 10 year old child. Give me 10 different niches for me to write or create a book about. And straight off the bat, it's gone and given me loads of different books I could create. All things that I wouldn't have thought of myself. Another way to support you to find your own niche would be that you can download this free spreadsheet that I've created. I'm going to put the link to this in the description of the video. Now this I have subcategorized into fiction, non-fiction and low content books. This one here really is your money maker. Low content books have such a lot of competition for them that they do struggle to make sales. I would really go with a medium content book in non-fiction. They're relatively easy to create. And if you go along to the bottom of the spreadsheet into the niching down page, I have put over 500 different books that you could create yourself. So for example, if you're making a puzzle book, there's loads of different puzzle books that you can make, chess puzzles, maths puzzles, maze puzzles. In children's books, you could have early reader books, educational activity books, fairy tale adventures, coloring books. There's so many different genres of coloring books. If you're good at art, these would be a great one for you to make. Even if you're making a joke book, there are loads of different kinds of jokes that you could make a book about. Niching down is really important because the more you niche down, the less competition you're going to have in that particular niche. So anyone could write a joke book, but by niching down into specific kinds of jokes, you're more likely to get recognized and onto the first page of Amazon. So do try to make your niche specific and make it something that you are going to enjoy making. 
there is pretty much something for everyone in this spreadsheet. So do go ahead and download that. So when you click on the link, it'll take you to this page here. So 500 niche ideas for KDP self-publishing. This is on my Gumroad store. Now this is completely free. So as you can see, it doesn't cost any money. I don't charge for anything that I have on my Gumroad store. So what you need to do is you need to put in name a fair price, put that in as zero and select, I want this. That'll take you to this page and all you have to do is enter your email address and press get. Then you will receive that spreadsheet. Whilst you're on here, you can of course also download all of my other things that I have put on here. So I've got copy and paste chat GPT prompts for self-publishing. I've got some adult coloring book keyword research. And this is one of the best ones that I've done recently, low competition categories for books. I've done a video about this specifically, and I would recommend having a, look, a little look at that when you've got yourself off the ground. The next thing that you need to do is to create compelling content. Now, if you're making a low content book, such as a logbook or a notebook, Gumroad has got loads of freeing tutorials which you can use. All you need to do is just click on this three line mark here, scroll down a little bit to writing and publishing, and go to resources. Here we've got something called KDP Interior. Select that, and there are loads of free products here that you can use. So if you just wanted to put lined paper in, cut and paste templates, graph paper, handwriting paper, music manuscript, etc., there's loads and loads here that is completely free. But remember that these are mostly very basic items. If you're looking for something a bit more specialized, I'd strongly recommend this website, which is Creative Fabrica. Now, this comes with a subscription charge, but you can pay for each product individually if you'd prefer. And it's got, when you first go on, 10 free products with a risk-free trial. The really good thing about this is that the longer I've had it, the cheaper it seems to be getting. So it's something I'd use an awful lot of the time, and it's something I'd strongly recommend. If I'm looking for something like colouring pages, you can see there are over 200,000 different things that I could choose from. And you can be as specific as you want. So if you wanted dragon colouring pages, butterflies, etc., just put those keywords into the search. So to get these with the free trial, it's very simple. You just download them. As well as colouring pages, it's got loads of other stuff. So you've got crossword puzzles here. You've got different images. You've got fonts. This website can even help you with the niche research that you wanted to do and is well worth the subscription charge. Now, if you're writing something like a self-help guide or short stories, something with a bit more writing, the options probably aren't so good, but there are still things in here that you could use to make your book. If there's not something specifically to your needs here, you can, of course, write it yourself or you could get ChatGPT to write it for you. You can see here with my chat GPT, I've got this web chat GPT one click prompts, which is a plugin function that I've downloaded. Now this is also free to get, and this has got pre-written prompts that you can use to write your own books and to help plan out your outline. So if you're just looking for writing, this has got one prompts for writing a YouTube video, for example, passing AI detection tools, professional script writing. If you go into copywriting in the categories, You've got a prompt here that's for human style essay writing, for example. This could literally write your book for you. Now, do bear in mind, you are allowed to use artificial intelligence to write your books, but be reminded that you do have to declare it when publishing. And ultimately, it might affect your rankings. So by all means, use artificial intelligence to write your book. But if you do do that, please declare it. Now this one click prompts, I just want to quickly show you how to find it and how to get it. So it's web chat GPT one click prompts plugin. It will usually be the top result, but I'll just show you it. So here we go, web chat GPT with internet access. But it means that chat GPT will connect to the internet, which previously it doesn't with the free version unless you add this plugin. And it will give you this free one click chat gpt prompt library with hundreds of high quality prompts that can revolutionize your daily tasks as you can see i've already got this plugin it's completely free to get that and honestly it's a fantastic plugin for chat gpt so once you've got your content prepared you are ready to create your book but before you create it you've actually got to format it correctly now bear with me because this is really important you need to go on to paperback formatting. Most books will be printed in paperback unless you specifically want it as a hardcover format. That will detract from your royalties if you do it as hardcover. So paperback formatting. 
And then you want to go to paperback and hardcover manuscript templates. Now, if you scroll down this page slightly, you get to this section here, which says download templates. I'm just going to do it with the sample content so that you can see what's going to, what it's going to look like inside and why this is so important. So we're selecting the downloads, the paperback manuscripts. We're going to go for the English option here and depending on what size you want your book to be. So this is in inches. I don't know why they do it in inches, but they do. This size here is roughly A4 size or a US letter size, this one is. So let's select this one. Imagine we're doing an activity book. And once you've downloaded that, you're just going to click Enable Editing. Alternatively, you can save it as a different document format so that you can edit it. Now, this is the reason why this is so important. If you look at the actual text here, you can see this margin here is slightly larger than this margin here. Now that is because that is where the book is going to bind. If you don't put your book content into this kind of format, you're gonna have uneven looking pages. So this is why it's so important to download this and put your actual documents and your content into this format. Because here it's already set up so that the binding aspect is taken care of and that your pages will not look skewed when it's actually published. So transfer all of your content into this format. These templates handily also have the structure of copyright as well of what you need to put. Anything that you write yourself is automatically copyrighted under international law. To just reiterate it to those people that are buying your books, you need to just pop your name here and the year. If you want to know about copyright in more detail, I have done a video about it, but please bear with me, it is quite an old one. The information in that remains exactly the same. Once you've put all your content in here, you need to save this as a PDF. So when you go on to saving this, you click down here and you save it as a PDF format. That's important for when you upload. If you save it as a Word document, it won't translate correctly into the book. Now that you've got your content there, you need to make a note of how many pages there are. It will say down here in the bottom left hand corner how many pages there are in your document. So this one, there's 29. That's important because you need that for making the size correct for your front cover. Before we move on to creating the front cover, we need to discuss the title. This is one of the single most important factors in creating a book that will make great sales. The keywords that someone is using to search for a book of your genre should be included in the title because that's what Amazon uses first to rank your book. What I mean by this is if, for example, somebody's looking on a book of gardening for idiots, a book with those words in their title are going to rank much higher than another book, a book titled Simplified Gardening, for example. So it's really important to know what keywords people are looking for. One way you can do this is by using a program called Publisher Rocket. Now, this is a paid program. I have purchased it. It is a one off cost and I think it was around $100. Now, this allows you to see how many times a keyword has been actually searched for. So if you're searching keywords, let's put in gardening. Now, Publisher Rocket will come up with loads of different options for you. So you've got gardening for beginners, gardening books, etc. And what you can do is you can press this search button and it will tell you how many times that particular keyword has been searched for on Amazon that month and how competitive it is. So basically, that's a score, an indicator of how many other books have got that particular keyword on them. If you want an exact number, more than a thousand. The color coding on this is fairly good. Ideally, you're looking for things that are green here with the estimated searches and green on the competitive score. 95 is not a good score. So this program shows you that gardening book for kids might be a good keyword for you. A good title because this has a relatively good amount of searches and a low competitive score. I explained in this video here how you can get very similar results to Publisher Rocket by using ChatGPT completely for free. And in fact, the prompt that I use to get these results on ChatGPT is included in my free Grumro product here. So if you're not happy paying for Publisher Rocket, you can always use that option. Be aware, though, that the results aren't quite as predictable because ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence. It won't always come up with the same results. It will do what it thinks. Another free option is here for you, self-publishing titans. Now this has some really good free tools. It does have a pricing structure, but the free tools on it are pretty good. 
So if you go along to this website, you can just install these free tools. So these are the two that I would recommend. So this one, the uh, best free KDP research tool. So I obviously have this already saying I can remove it. So that's the niche finder and the keyword suggestion expander. Again, I have that one. You will need to register your email address with them to be able to get those free tools. Once you've got those, you'll have these two little icons that come at the top of your search bar. Let's just turn those on and log in. Now, when I go along to Amazon, you've got this display coming up. So not only do you, you pop in gardening for idiots and it comes up with some keyword suggestions that you can look for, but it's also got this sort of scoring system here. Be aware that it can take a little while for that score to come up, but a score of more than 50 is what you're aiming to get. This score is made up by the various different factors. So here it shows you how many different results you've got. You want that to be low. You've got the bestseller ranking. This shows you whether there's a market for it or not. You want this to be pretty low as well. The number of reviews is also important. If there's loads of different reviews, that means you're gonna be competing against other great selling books that have got loads of reviews that are gonna naturally rank higher. And then you've got the average price of the book. That shows you an indication of what you can charge for your book. To make life simpler for you, I have made you this handy little table. So we want the niche score to be higher than 50. The results to be between 250 to 1500 would be a good result. A bestseller rank of below 100,000 would be great. Reviews to be less than 700 and an average price more than nine pounds. A price of more than nine pounds means that you're gonna get more royalties for that book. And it gives you a sort of cushion in case you want to do a little bit of advertising. So I'd recommend taking a screenshot of this particular table and refer to it when you're using that particular plugin. So a title of Gardening for Idiots has a much better score than Simplified Gardening. The title is going to be so important. Also, please be aware that titles cannot be copyrighted, but they can be trademarked. That's important to know just in case your title that you choose is trademarked. Now I have done a full on in-depth video on this subject. I'm not going to go into that too much here, but basically things like, for example, Lego is definitely trademarked. You can't use those particular words within your title when you're publishing a book. Another one might be like Star Wars, for example. If you use a title like that, you could breach the Amazon rules and you could get banned. So please be careful with trademark. The trademark also applies to the whole phrase. So for example, The Little Mermaid is trademarked, but Mermaid is not trademarked. Now we're moving on to creating a cover. This is the single most important factor in your entire book. The cover is the first thing that your purchaser will see. So it's really important to make sure it looks professional and engaging. This really does take practice to get it really good. And if it's not engaging and interesting, your purchaser is going to skip straight past your book. Designing my own front cover is not something I usually do myself. I normally get this done for me. Now, usually I will get this done on Fiverr. If you just go on here and search for book cover design, you can see that there's over 17,000 people that are offering this service for you. And they're relatively cheap. So we've got loads of different options here. And I think you'll agree these look better than most things that we could all design ourselves. So just find one that you like, message them, agree details. You don't actually have to pay for anything until you are happy with the design. So until you've actually accepted that book cover design, money will not transfer across to the designers. So there's no way that they can scam you. Fiverr regulates this really quite well. If, however, you do want to design your own book cover, there are a couple of different options for you on Amazon. So you can go and use the cover creator tool. Personally, I don't like this option. I don't think they're very engaging book covers, but it is an option for you and it's quite simple to do. The other way to do it is to do it yourself using their guidelines and templates. You do need to download their templates. So look at the cover calculator and template generator here. You need to select your binding type. So if we're going with a paperback, what kind of interior it's going to be? Is it going to be in color or is it going to be in black and white? For the most part, it will be in black and white. The kind of paper that you want, usually just go for white. There's no difference apart from in the price. And always the page turn direction is always going to be left to right. 
Then you need to select your size and whether it's going to be in inches. So remember we went for one earlier that was 8.5 by 11 inches and then the number of pages. So we went with 29. Then we go on to calculate the dimensions. So here it's telling you exactly what size your book cover needs to be in inches. So for this particular book, it needs to be 17.315 inches in width and 11.25 in height. That forms this format. So you've got the front cover here and the back here. This is where your barcode's gonna go. Now don't worry about buying a barcode because Amazon will automatically provide that for you. You can easily download this template. And then if you go along to a free design platform such as canva.com, you can create your own design with that particular size. So you'd want to go in for a creating a design of custom size. In here, you need to put your dimensions from what you got off Amazon. So we need to put in this width and this height. And then you create the new design. Then you go to uploads and you can upload your file that you've just downloaded. You select that and it adds it to your page. Now, for whatever reason, it doesn't do it to the full size. But this is your template. You don't want any of the writing to cover any of these red areas here. This is your front section and this is your back section. You need to leave this area clear for the barcode. Other than that, you can do whatever you like with it. Now I have done a few different videos about making your own book cover. I'm not gonna go into that in massive detail, but it's fairly simple to do. So for example, you can just put an overlay here of a block color, for example, if that's what you want to do. It's very simple to just add text, change the font of it, etc. You can add certain graphics. And if you want to make it easier to see that background, you can either bring this element to the front so you can layer it, bring it to front. You can make that transparent by clicking up the here. And you can start to see how that's going to look on your actual book. So you can see that this logo, that red part here is covering the red area of the background, which is what we don't want. So we need to make that a little bit smaller if that, if that was going on the front cover. Canva is a great free tool that you can use. It can be used as a pro version as well, but play around with the free version first. There's plenty on here that you can do, and I've done loads of different videos specifically about Canva, which I think you'll find really useful. Of course, once you've created your own front cover, you can then save it as a PDF. Again, remember it needs to be saved as a PDF so that you can upload it onto Amazon. To do that on Canva, you just press share, download as a PDF print, and then you just download it. Finally, we're actually going to publish the book. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press this yellow button here and create. We're gonna be making a paperback book, and we're gonna fill in all these details. There's three different sections to here. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to edit one that I've already done because it won't let you progress onto the next section until you've done all the stages. But basically what you need to do is you need to enter your book title. Remember to use one with a great score. You're gonna put in your author name. Now that can be a pen name. You are very much allowed to use a pen name. In fact, if you go into the help section and just search for pen name, it does say here that you can use your pen name as long as it's appropriate. There's nothing wrong with using a pen name to publish your book, but you must make sure that you use your real name under your KDP account information so that they can issue the payments and tax correctly. Your pen name, however, must be original. For example, it's saying here, don't try publishing anything as JK Rowling, because that might be viewed as false advertising, for example. If by some bad luck your name actually is Stephen King, Amazon would ask you to prove that. There has been a bit of conversation about whether you can use the surname of press or publishing. Basically, you're not allowed to do anything that would mislead your readers. So using the surname of press might be a little bit of a no-go. That being said, loads of people do it. I just don't know whether they're gonna get caught or not because that could be classed as misleading your audience, which is something that Amazon strongly prohibits. So do feel free to pop in a pen name if you want to there. Then you need to put in your description. There's not many options for formatting this. You can obviously make the font bold, italic or underline it. You can have it as different headings, but that's about it. 
In order to make your book more attractive for the purchaser, you can do something called A plus content, but you can only apply that after the book's been published. But this is where you write the description of the book, the blurb if you like. You need to select whether you own the copyright, if you've written it yourself, or indeed if you've downloaded something from Creative Fabrica where you've paid for it and you've got the rights to hold it, you have the copyright. So you need to always tick that you own the copyright. You can publish books that are in the public domain, but I wouldn't recommend this because most of the, for the most part they've already been done and there's already usually a free version on Amazon. You need to express whether it's got sexually explicit content on the title or in the images. The reading age is optional, but that's great for kids' books. And this is the place where you want to select your primary marketplace. For the most part, it will be Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk, but it's up to you. I can't see many benefits to doing it in different countries. I like it to be Amazon.co.uk because my money comes in pounds and that's how I prefer to receive my royalties and I understand the pound more than I do the dollar. Then you need to select whether it's a low content book. That's important and that applies for things like notebooks, planners, journals, etc. Things where it is repetitive. It does tell you here clearly what a low content book is. But basically, if it's repetitive content over and over again, like a notebook, that would be a low content book. Then you can put in your keywords. Use ones that you found, say, on Publisher Rocket that were good. Remember, gardening book for kids would be a good one. Obviously, if only use that if it is a gardening book, though. You can put in phrases. It doesn't have to just be singular words. Some people do try to cram the keywords in and put as many keywords in as possible. I wouldn't recommend doing that because it does tend to confuse the algorithm on Amazon. Choose the most specific keywords and the ones that you found that are the best. You can either schedule when your book is released or you can release it straight away. Then you save and continue. That'll then take you onto this page where you are allowed to select that you want it to assign you a free ISBN. You can publish with using your own ISBN, but though be aware that they do cost money. That would allow you to publish it elsewhere other than KDP. I've never found the need to do that myself. Then you need to select the print options. So I usually go with a black and white interior with white paper. You need to select the trim size. Remember which size you made it. It is quite important. Bleed settings. That's a little bit of a complicated one. The bleed is important only for things where the image extends to the edge of the page. So for example, this book here does not have any bleed. If that image went straight up to the pay, edge of the page, that would be considered as having bleed. It's really only important when you've got images in your book. I have done a full video about bleed, which you can watch if you want to. For the most part though, you'll be selecting no bleed. And then you want to just select whether it's going to be a matte or a glossy finish. Then you need to upload your manuscript. Remember, it's a PDF that you want to upload. So you just select that and then choose whichever document it is that you've saved it as. Then you upload your front cover. I'm just editing a book that I made for another video, which is why this looks different. Then you need to select whether it's got this AI generated content. That's important if you've used artificial intelligence in making the text itself, translating your book, or whether you've used any AI images. If you have used any, you have to select yes. Then you go and launch the previewer. Don't worry if it says this, that normally says that for me. This stage usually takes a few minutes. Now, if for whatever reason you've selected the wrong sizing or you formatted your book wrong, it'll come up like this. This is because I created this front cover for a completely different size book. I have done a couple of really good troubleshooting videos in case you get problems like this where you've accidentally made a mistake. I can show you how to fix them in this video here. The ideal scenario is that you have no errors showing up here and that it all looks perfectly OK and within the lines. You want to check all of your set pages to make sure there's no errors, but they would come up here if there were any. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and approve that. Then you press save and continue to move on to the next step. This is where you price your book. So you can choose whichever price you like, but bear in mind that the minimum charge that you can apply for that book is going to be listed here. So £3.88. So if I put that in as £3.88 for this book, Unfortunately, I won't get any royalties at all. 
Pricing at something reasonable like £6.99 is going to produce me a decent royalty of £1.86. Remember when we were looking at the average price, that gives you a good indicator of what you can charge for your book. The price you choose is completely up to you. Bear in mind as well that Amazon sometimes will discount your book. Now that will never affect your royalty. It'll only affect the money that Amazon takes from your book. So if, for example, you see your book that you've listed as £6.99 being sold for £5 something, that's a great thing because it means that it's a better offer for your customers, but you are still going to get the same amount of royalty. I see that question happening a lot, which is why I mention it. Once you've chosen your price, you can select as well expanded distribution. That means that big booksellers such as Waterstones or something like that might purchase a job lot of your books from Amazon, but that would mean that you get a lower rate on those sales. It's something I'd strongly recommend doing because it's only going to increase your visibility. Bear in mind that there are specific requirements for expanded distribution such as book size. You can view those here, but if you can select it, I always would. Once you've finished putting in your pricing, you just publish the book. It can take about 72 hours for it to be available to purchase. That's roughly how long it will take Amazon to review your content and agree that it's okay to be published. That in a nutshell is how you start with KDP. You can go on to market your book in this section here. There's various different things that you can do. It's creating an author central page is completely free. Amazon ads will cost you money. And I do go into a bit of detail on Amazon ads in some of my other videos. If you want to check that out, this one here is really good. A plus content is something I always, always recommend. This is such an important aspect of your book. So when somebody clicks on your book that they like the look of, they're going to be looking for more information. This part here is the description that you will have entered into the KDP description part. Here, this is the bit that you can't format very much. Then further down the page, you've got the A plus content. This is the selling area. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on A plus content here because I have made some really good videos about how to do it. This is the eye catching area that is going to really help sell your book. So if you haven't seen those videos already, do take a look at them. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's inspired some of you to go ahead and make that first step into making your own career and your own online income like I am doing. I'm always producing lots of new content about how to make the best of KDP and how to make the best of your books. So you have, if you haven't subscribed already, do hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell so that you know when I've next made a video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.